How are you? Good morning. It's Dr. Emily from the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy and from the Center of Functional Podiatry and Regenerative Medicine. I want to speak a little bit about umbilical cord injections, stem cell injections in general, as well as amniotic, PRP, and embryotic injections. So for those who have been following my work, you are quite familiar that I am very passionate around anything that has to do with the body healing itself, which is why I started my fellowship in functional medicine. Medicine, and I'm very um, also passionate in getting my patients to think about their diet, all of the inflammatory levels that they might have, some of their stress markers, and then putting them on a very healthy vitamin supplementation regimen, as well as looking at infrared sauna, whole body cryo, and different techniques to really allow the body to heal itself. I'm very much not into treating symptoms. I'm about treating the body as one entire unit in a very integrated approach, understanding how powerful the body is and then it really does want to heal itself. So when it comes to stem cell injections, you may be familiar with these, you may not be familiar with these. There's a little bit of controversy around stem cells because a lot of people associate them with the embryonic stem cells. When you start to question kind of the embryo and pro-choice, pro-life and all of that kind of when are things um, considered, you know, a life, that's a different side of the actual stem cells that are being injected from a regenerative medicine perspective. There's different options. PRP is the one that's probably the most common. However, there's a lot of great advances when it comes to stem cell therapy. One of the ones that I do in my office, and I've been doing them for the past several years, are amniotic chorion injections. The amniotic chorion injections come from the placental membrane of donated placenta, so they're full-term births, donated placenta, and the amniotic chorion has a very high concentration of these pluripotent mesenchymal cells. These cells then differentiate when they are injected into the body. So if they're injected into the knee, they're going to stimulate chondrocytes and create cartilage. If they're injected into a tendon, they stimulate fibroblasts, creating more collagen. So they're a very powerful aspect of regenerative medicine. Perhaps you are familiar with adipocyte-based stem cells, which would be you having your own fat aspirated and then drawing out the stem cells as well as bone marrow aspirate, which also has a very high concentration of stem cells. Those are based on your own stem cells. They're procedures to draw out the either the bone marrow or the adipocytes. When we start thinking of other options that are not based on a procedure of getting them out of yourself, but are more autographs, so they come from someone else, that's where you start seeing the placental or these amniotic chorion injections, as well as the new umbilical cord injections. Why the umbilical cord injections are so exciting is because they have a very high active level of these pluripotent cells. When you do a back-to-back -back of just the amniotic versus the umbilical cord, you actually see very high, much more activity in the umbilical cord. Very similar to if you're looking at bone marrow aspirate versus umbilical cord, umbilical cord again offers very powerful, much more active cells, which means you're obviously going to be getting a much higher efficacy. Some of the research around umbilical cord injections shows that all stem cells in general, but what the umbilical cord injections are really good for is they have a very high concentration of hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid, you may be familiar with that as the, the fluid that's surrounding our joints, is it brings hydration to the tissue. As it's bringing hydration to the tissue, it's also allowing a perfect scaffolding for the cells to repair and rebuild. Another key thing of umbilical cord injections and all stem cell injections in general is they are very anti-inflammatory. So they do a very good job of decreasing pro-inflammatory markers. So they have more of an anti-inflammatory marker effect. Now, when it comes to wound healing and tissue repair, there's different stages that your body goes through when it is repairing an injured tissue. You have an inflammatory stage, which is where a lot of people actually get stuck. You have an acute, and I know there's an argument of tendinosis versus tendinitis. Is it inflammatory? Is it not inflammatory? There's always inflammatory markers, which is why one of the most powerful aspects of stem cell injections is to have the decrease of pro-inflammatory cytokines because a lot of people actually get stuck in this inflammatory phase. Then what they do is they go from the inflammatory phase and they jump to the last phase, which is more of this scarring response. So they kind of get stuck in these two responses. 
So when you look at degenerated tissue, if it's the plantar fascia, the Achilles tendon, the bicep tendon, whatever tendon it might be, rotator cuff, what you see is that you see, we'll call it for the sake of this, like a scar tissue. The individual tissue fibers are very uh, haphazard. They're not in a parallel position. They're in kind of a, a spider web or a haystack kind of arrangement. And then the blood vessels, the tiny blood vessels that are formed, it's called neovascularization, are again in a very haphazard way, which means that as these blood vessels are in a haphazard way, you have lots of opportunity for blood flow, oxygen, tissue, all of the nutrients to repair. But because it's haphazard, is there's a lot of almost like dead ends. So you're going into a direction, hit a wall, you don't get the circulation that you need in the oxygen. So a key aspect of doing the stem cell injections is that you rearrange this haphazard neovascularization into a much more organized vascularization. That means that you know you're getting the nutrients to the tissue. So not only are you decreasing the inflammatory markers, you're bringing hydration to the tissue through the hyaluronic acid. It's packed with very powerful growth factors, which is going to stimulate the fibroblasts or the chondrocytes or whatever joint or tissue that you're injecting it into. And then it helps to rearrange the vascularization. So essentially it's focusing and it's controlling the two ends of the healing process and focusing on that central place. Why we look at placental based and umbilical cord based, so very kind of intrauterine um, stem cells, is that when a, a fetus is repairing itself for any damage, it does it in a very clean way which means that it doesn't have the scarring response and the haphazard vascularization. So any of the tissue repair that's happening as the child is forming is again in a very organized way. So we're trying to replicate that in the human body. Now, a lot of the research around umbilical cord injections, there's a lot of super exciting research. You can actually not only do the umbilical cord injections into the joint, into the tendon, into the fascia, etc., but you can also do it intravenously, which is exciting. I'm gonna absolutely start doing this in my office because if you're injecting stem cells intravenously, now you're creating an entire systemic response that is going to be anti-inflammatory. These umbilical cord stem cells actually cross the blood-brain barrier, which means that they're showing exciting research around intravenous umbilical cord injections post-stroke. And they're actually seeing a neuroprotective response, they're seeing neuroplasticity, neuroregeneration, and seeing really incredible results post-stroke. They're getting back to functional and behavioral stages that they were before the stroke. They're doing these injections 48 hours after that stroke and they're seeing the highest efficacy. There's also exciting research around umbilical cord injections after a spinal cord injury and what this tissue is doing to a neuroprotective benefit. This also allows opportunity to podiatry and where we start to see different nerve injury and um, peripheral neuropathies and things like that or any nerve injury, that there's some really powerful ways that we can use these umbilical cord injections. So if you are in chronic pain, you have any of your clients or your family members who might have joint pain, tendon pain, um, an autoimmune response, anything, maybe they, they have had a stroke, recently passed, um, thinking of any nerve condition, anything that you're trying to look for an alternative option that allows the body to heal itself in the way that it was actually designed, I encourage you to check out stem cell therapy. There are many different types. A lot of practitioners are, are the most familiar with PRP, but do know that you have bone marrow, you have adipocyte, you have the PRP, as I mentioned, you have embryonic, which really aren't used, and then you use the amniotic and the umbilical cord. In my office here in New York, I do the umbilical cord injections and the amniotic chorion injections, although I'm going to switch and do primarily the umbilical cord injections. They can be injected in the site of injury, but they can also be injected intravenously. I hope that you guys learned a lot. I hope that you uh, start to seek out these additional options, and I hope to see you soon. Take care.